Hi, this is Matt Clark, and in this video we're going to cover what is drop shipping. I figured I wanted to throw this in here before we actually got started on the Amazon portion, just because some of you out there probably aren't very familiar with drop shipping, especially if you come from um, studying affiliate marketing and information marketing and that sort of thing. Um, drop shipping is just a, another way of basically getting products to customers. So there are a few different ways products are distributed. Uh, one is retail. This is, you know, an example is Walmart. You can basically walk into their store and buy products anytime you want. And, you know, there's a million other retail stores out there that you're familiar with. Uh, there's wholesale. Wholesale, I gave an example here of Europa supplements. Uh, for example, what they do and what a lot of wholesalers do is they'll actually buy products in bulk from the manufacturers and then sell them, instead of selling them directly to consumers, They'll actually sell them to retail store outlets and that sort of thing. For example, I, I know it seems like uh, Gold's Gym seems to buy different products from Europa. Um, I'm sure they do some from the manufacturers too, but uh, Europa sort of stands as like a, a middleman. And there's many, many examples like this out there, but wholesalers basically, in this, this example anyways, is basically people that are just buying uh, directly from the manufacturers and then not selling to retail customers, they're instead selling to retail outlets. And then there's manufacturers uh, like the many in China who are basically creating, uh, taking raw materials and turning those into products. Now there's a bunch of different variations of these and this doesn't, definitely doesn't cover everything but just to give you an overview, uh, these are basically the different ways products are distributed. You know, sometimes there's uh, manufacturers and wholesalers are the same person. You can actually, as a, a retail store, you can buy products directly from a manufacturer who also acts as a wholesaler. And uh, sometimes they'll even do the drop shipping for you. So then, to let you know a little bit about drop shipping, which is a little bit different, uh, that's what we're going to talk about after I give you sort of visual overview of the other distribution, the normal distribution anyways. So the normal distribution model is normally you normally a manufacturer which you could see in that top left picture normally a manufacturer will send products to a wholesaler a wholesaler places a huge bulk order and then the wholesaler will actually sell products to a retail store and then the retail store finally sells them to the end customer now that's sort of the normal distribution model it goes from manufacturer to wholesaler to retailer and then the retailer is selling directly to the consumer and shipping and you know if they have a retail store that's fine if they're doing shipping they're basically getting the product directly to the consumer and collecting the money now on a drop shipping model the customer is you know just sort of in the previous example they're buying something directly from the retailer like normal and then the instead of the retailer stocking a bunch of products and having to buy stuff from wholesalers or manufacturers, instead what happens here is the retailer basically places an order with the either wholesaler or manufacturer directly and they ship it directly to the customer. Now this sort of uh, has a lot of advantages and a few disadvantages, but just to give you an overview, um, basically what's happening here is this retail store is no longer shipping products, storing products, and that sort of thing. They're basically placing an order with a wholesaler or manufacturer who is then shipping directly to the customer. Now some of the benefits of drop shipping. As we saw in the previous example, the um, the retailer at that point is no longer having to stock a whole bunch of inventory. So there's a pretty low startup cost. This is how I actually got started in selling online is I started uh, basically found some different supplement manufacturers who would drop ship. Uh, so at first I was carrying just a few products in stock in my own inventory and then I found out one of those brands would actually drop ship and so instead of being able to carry only a few and having to manage and reorder inventory and all that sort of thing all of a sudden I could basically sell 140 different products to one manufacturer and not have to carry a dime more in inventory. And with outsourcing these days, uh, that's very low cost. It costed all of about 50 bucks to get somebody to add those 140 products to my e-commerce store and all of a sudden I was in business and carrying a whole lot more products. It sort of grew from there to 20,000 different products. Uh, over the course of about two years, purely on drop shipping. So like I said, you can carry lots of products. 
The reason Amazon is able to carry millions and millions of products is because they're not storing all of those products. They got started and became the dominant force in selling books because they were able to basically go out to these little mom and pop bookstores and just people who collected books and had extra books and that sort of thing and tell them, hey, you know, rather than trying to sell your little one-off sales to people that happen to find you locally, um, how about you list your books on our website and basically we will bring all the customers to our website and just basically split the profits with you, you know, not equally, but split the profits with you and orders will come through our site, we'll send the orders to you, you send the books to the customer. So this gave advantages to Amazon because they were all of a sudden able to carry millions and millions of products without having to worry about carrying millions of products in inventory. And this was beneficial to the booksellers because they all of a sudden had a whole lot more customers. And this allowed Amazon to carry these millions of products that may only get one or two sales a month, but it doesn't cost them anything extra to do so. And like I said, uh, no inventory system is needed. Uh, if you talk to anybody who's done a whole lot of inventory management, you'll find out that soaring and managing and tracking inventory is a huge pain in the butt. I was talking to a guy the other day who runs a huge, uh, basically, lumber supply company. They actually order uh, housing, different housing products and that sort of thing directly from China and then ship them out of their facility in Dallas. And I was asking sort of what he used for inventory management. And he's like, oh, yeah, we had a custom piece of software built and that kind of thing. I was like, okay, that's cool. I was like, if you don't mind me asking, how much did that cost? The piece of software alone to manage all that inventory and do it right and do all the forecasting and all that sort of thing cost him $150,000, just the software alone. Now, there's ones out there online that'll do it cheaper, but inventory management is a huge pain in the butt. Um, so this is a huge benefit of, of drop shipping. And, like, and there's no shipping staff, no warehouse or inventory insurance. Just different things and different costs you'd have to think about if you're storing your own products. And there's automation. If you want to live the whole four-hour four hour work week lifestyle, drop shipping offers a huge benefit because you don't have to have a whole lot of extra employees. You can basically, through outsourcers and just automation online, you can basically automate this whole process, especially if you have a distributor. Uh, who's drop shipping your product, especially if you have one that will take your orders directly from your store. Uh, if they'll do that, then you can basically have all the orders coming into your store and going directly to the drop shipper who then ships them out and you basically never touch anything. And you can carry and sell lots of different products. I'm stressing that again because it's a huge benefit. Uh, it allows just a single person with a computer to basically get up and get running and selling a ton of different products without having to have any cost or know anything about inventory. But not all is good with dropshipping. There are a few drawbacks. First one is you need reliable distributors. Now this is something you really need to think about because we've had, especially with regards to Amazon, because Amazon will kill you, it will suspend your account, block your account, if you have products that don't get out or don't go to the right place and that sort of thing. Uh, they have all the metrics and it's all sort of automated on their part and they're very big on this because people go to Amazon and they expect to order products and get what they ordered. Now if you have a distributor who screws up a bunch of orders, uh, doesn't ship it to the right person, or they don't tell you when products are out of stock, um, as you can tell I'm speaking from personal experience here, uh, then you can run into a lot of problems. In your normal business and on Amazon, uh, you very much need to have reliable distributors. Now what that means is a distributor who ships out the right products, they have all the uh, you know sort of systems in place to make sure the correct products go out, that they go out on time, uh, that and that they actually tell you when products are out of stock or no longer available so you can update your listings on whatever site you're selling on, including Amazon. Another drawback of dropshipping is you don't have full control over packaging. Now, if you want to include marketing materials in your packages and that sort of thing, uh, depending on who you're dropshipping through, you may not have full control. Uh, some people, if you're sending directly from the manufacturer, they're not going to, uh, especially for you, just include a bunch of marketing material you tell them to. You may be able to work that, with, that out with some of them, but most of them it's probably not going to happen. So that's one pretty big drawback of dropshipping because you can often, you can hand out coupons and you can often get a lot more 
uh, dollar per dollar per customer and your lifetime value if you're able to add different marketing material and educational material to packages. Another thing is cost. That is a is a very big drawback of drop shipping, is that if you're sending products through a distributor or a manufacturer, uh, they're likely going to charge you whatever price, whatever wholesale price they're selling to you at, um, but basically just for a quantity of one or however many are in the order. Now this is a little bit different than if you're warehousing products or using a fulfillment company because at that point, say you know you sell a product a whole lot, uh, then you can likely, oftentimes be able to buy like you know a bulk amount of those products, 100, 200 or however many you're buying and you can often get a cheaper price. So the per unit cost of drop shipping is generally going to be a little higher. Now this is going to depend on different situations and your arrangement with these people and product availability but that's one thing to consider is that sometimes drop shipping uh, you're not able to get as good of price as if you were to order a whole bunch of the product yourself. So that's basically it. That's uh, You've pretty much learned what drop shipping is and you've learned the benefits of it and the drawbacks. So what's next? Uh, next, we're going to talk about drop shipping and uh, as it specifically relates to Amazon, because Amazon's the biggest drop shipper in the world and wants to be your partner.